Hey everybody, welcome back again. Uh, today we're going to look at what's called percent yield. Uh, percent yield is a way to measure how far a reaction has gone to completion. So we want to look at if we react something like silver nitrate with the barium chloride like I have in this example here, we want to make sure that this reaction is going as full to the to the products as possible. Because sometimes we do reactions and they're not going to react completely and the way you get them to form more and more products is the process that you do to get that. So how you carry out the reaction actually has a, a big impact on that. Like you could increase the temperature, maybe you'll get more silver chloride. If you lower the temperature, maybe you'll get more silver chloride. Um, but there's maybe if it's uh, acidic or basic, there's there's things that you can do to these reactions to change the amount of that solid that's forming. So percent yield is a way to measure just about how much of that product you're, you're, you're supposed to get. Okay, so um, when we are calculating a percent yield, what it is is the ratio of the actual, which is the experimental, which you actually get in the lab. So when you do the experiment, the actual yield is what you were really producing. That's what you measure on the balance. The theoretical is your expected amount. That's what you would expect to get by doing a calculation. So this is nothing that you actually are in the lab doing. You're actually just doing mathematical calculations. And everything we've been doing on paper is strictly theoretical because we're just trying to figure out what those masses should be. So when we take our percent yield and we actually go in the lab and we compare what we actually got from the experiment to what we expected to get, that's what we're going to look at uh, to, to find what's called the percent yield. So we take a look at the example I have here. What we have is uh, 5.95 grams of the silver nitrate uh, solution is reacted with excess barium chloride. First I'm going to go ahead and put that 5 uh, 0.95 grams of the silver nitrate here because it's the mass that I have of the silver nitrate and they tell us that the barium chloride is in excess so there's extra of this so we don't really care about this because we know that this will be left over afterwards that's good because when this kind of setup happens we know that we don't have to figure out the limiting reactant we know that this one will be my limiting reactant that this is going to be the one that runs out because this is by def stating in the problem it's excess so they react those together. We're going to find the percent yield for this reaction if the chemist uh, actually obtained 4 grams. So the chemist actually goes through and finds uh, that we have 4 grams. This is the actual amount. You can't get this number unless you do the experiment. So the actual has to be given to you. All right? So the actual or the experimental value has to be given. And that's what this number is here. So that 4.00 uh, grams is the experimental amount that they actually went through and, and did in the lab. What we need to do is we need to figure out what the theoretical is and that's what this, the calculations are. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out the moles first because remember we want to use the, the stoichiometry to figure out how many grams of silver chloride. So how many grams of silver chloride should I have gotten if I do this reaction completely? Because remember if this runs out and goes to zero which is what we want to have happen, how much of the silver chloride will I form at the end of the experiment. So that's what I'm looking for. Remember this one starts off as zero because we haven't made any. It's going to go down by 2x and this is going to go up by 2x. Now if you look at that we know that the ratio between those is going to be a one-to-one -one ratio and that might make your calculations a little bit easier when you're doing this. So what I'm going to do is take that 5.95 grams and I'm going to do like I did in the previous problems. I'm going to find the moles and then I'm going to find the uh, number of moles of the silver chloride. So I'm going to do that really quick here. Okay, so we can see that if I start with 5.95 grams of silver nitrate, using the molar mass of silver nitrate, I can get 0 0.0350 moles of the silver nitrate. Now because these react with a one-to-one -one ratio, it makes it real easy to do that calculation. This is the nice thing about these tables, is you don't have to show this calculation down here if you're using the table. You would have to show this calculation here. You'd have to show where that 0 0.0350 moles of the silver nitrate, nitrate came from. But because you got this set up here, you can actually just go ahead and throw that number in here if you notice that that ratio is a one-to-one -one ratio. Even if you notice it's double, you can double in your head and put that number here. You don't have to show those calculations if you're using the table. Okay, but you should definitely show the, the calculation here. One thing you probably would want to do if you're using the table is maybe solve for x, which I showed you in previous videos. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is if we want to get the theoretical, remember that's what we're looking for, we're looking for the theoretical mass of the silver chloride. That's what we're trying to find in these pro this problem. So I have the mass of the 
silver chloride over here. So the last step here, well not the last step, but at least the last step to get the mass would be to take that 0 0.0350 moles of the silver chloride and find its mass, which I'll do really fast. Okay, so I have the mass of the silver chloride. So this is the mass that I should have gotten if all of that 5.95 grams of the silver nitrate went to zero. So if I use up all of that silver nitrate that I have, the most that I could ever get out of this would be 5.00, sorry, 5.02. So this is my theoretical amount that I'm looking for, or the expected amount, the amount that I expect to get in the lab, because I, this is in theory what I should have, so that's what I would expect to get when I went in the lab. Well, when they went into the lab, the experimental amount only came out to 4.00 grams, so they didn't get the whole amount that they're supposed to. And this is typical. A lot of chemical reactions aren't going to produce full products. And this is typical of these reactions to not be able to produce full products uh, because of, there's a lot of things that limit the ability for the reaction to produce products. There might be side reactions going on, things other, you know, that are going on. We'll, you know, we'll talk about those in later videos. Uh, but for now, we're looking at how, what would our theoretical yield be if I have four grams compared to that five grams? So I can quickly figure out that percent yield just by plugging into my percent yield equation at the top, which I can really quickly do here. And I end up with 79.68%, or if I round with significant figures, 79.7% yield. So this would be my percent yield. So I'm only about 80% efficient. So I only got 80% of this number here, roughly, uh, rather than the full 100%. That's the goal of chemist, uh, chemistry, is to try to figure out how to get that up to 100%. What did I do in this reaction? Can I change something about the reaction? Can I cool it down? Can I add something to it? Um, you know, is the pressure got to be changed? Whatever. You know, how, a lot of things you would look at as a chemist to try to m increase that amount of of uh, silver chloride. Uh, now, this is the the highest amount of silver chloride could possibly get from this reaction because I can't get any more because the silver nitrate ran out. So if I ever get higher than 5.02 grams, there has to be something else going on. And that something else would be a contaminant would be in there. Something that shouldn't be in there got measured in there that you shouldn't have. Or maybe you didn't carefully measure things properly. Uh, but uh, the idea is that you cannot get more than 5.02 grams based on this setup. The only way I can get more of that is to add more of the silver nitrate. So it would increase my limiting reactant. Because remember, that's the one that controls the amount of product form. So there you go. That's uh, percent yields. And uh, if you have any questions, just uh, let me know. And I'll talk to you soon.